All right. Well, welcome in and good evening, everyone. We are so happy that you can join us uh, for our latest edition of this educational webinar series that we like to put out for you guys. Um, we are so very excited for tonight um, for multiple reasons. One, to be joined by everybody, um, but two, to uh, introduce to some of you, some of you have seen him and met him in the clinic here, to introduce the newest addition to our Harvard Eye family, uh, Dr. Shraf Ahmad, who will be giving tonight's uh, presentation on the latest technology in cataract surgery. Um, this is generally the part of the evening where I would give a little background um, on tonight's speaker, but given uh, that he is the latest addition to the Harvard Eye family, we thought who get better to give a little bit of background about himself than Dr. Ahmad himself. So uh, without any further ado, I will pass things off to Dr. Ahmad. If anybody does have any questions throughout tonight's webinar, we like to make this interactive please feel free to go ahead and utilize that question and answer function down below or the chat. Um, and we'll be happy to address those questions. We will be doing so at the end of tonight's lecture. So we will be able to leave some time for you um, so we can address some questions there just in case um, the initial questions are answered throughout tonight's webinar. So um, like I said, we are so very excited for tonight's event. Uh, and without further ado, I will, I will pass things on to tonight's speaker, Dr. Ashraf Ahmad. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate it. Again, for, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ashraf Ahmad. I'm one of the cataract cornea and refractive surgery specialists here at Harvard Eye. I'm super excited to have this opportunity to talk to you guys about the latest technology in cataract surgery. This is sort of a conversation that I have with my patients on the daily, and I always wish that I have more time to go into more detail and more depth about sort of cataract surgery, what's available, the latest technology, latest lenses. And so to have this opportunity right now is really a fantastic opportunity for myself. Um, and so let's go ahead and dive right in. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm actually from the Midwest. I, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. It's where I did most of my training. Um, I received my medical degree from Northeast Ohio Medical University. I then completed my internship at the Cleveland Clinic then completed my residency at Case Western Reserve University, and then uh, completed my training at UC Irvine uh, in, in a fellowship in cornea and refractive surgery. Um, and so that's how I ended up here on the West Coast, and for obvious reasons, uh, did not go back to the Midwest. <laughs> um, and so as far as the agenda for today, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about what cataracts are, what symptoms you may experience if you have cataracts, um, and then we'll take a look at what standard cataract surgery looks like. We'll talk about laser-assisted cataract surgery and how that differs from standard cataract surgery. Um, and then we're going to take, take a pretty in-depth dive into all of the available current lenses that are on the market that we utilize here at Harvard Eye. Um, we'll also talk about a technology called Aura. Um, and then finally, we'll end with what's, what, you ex what you should expect at your consultation when you come in for your visit. And so um, let's briefly talk about what normal anatomy looks like. If you look at the figure there on the left, um, you can see that the normal lens is this clear lens that sits behind the colored part of the eye. Uh, and over time, that lens becomes cloudy. And that's what we refer to as a cataract. And so when that clear lens becomes cloudy, that's when you may start to experience symptoms of cataracts, which can be in the form of glare, halos, especially at night when you're driving. Um, you may see them from oncoming headlights. Um, you may see some starbursts also around headlights. You may even experience some of these symptoms during the daytime as well. Um, and it's mainly because when you have this cloudy lens, the, the light that's entering the eyes is scattered uh, by that cataract and is no longer going through a clear medium. And that's what results in some of these symptoms. Um, other symptoms that you may experience are blurred vision, regardless of whether you use glasses or not. Uh, you may have some light and light sensitivity. Uh, you, your overall quality or clarity of the vision may, may be fading, or you may see almost a yellowish tint to, to your vision. Um, some patients rarely may experience double vision. Um, and oftentimes you may, you may notice that your prescription and your glasses has been changing as well. And so what we frequently hear from our patients is they're coming in from their optometry clinics uh, and their optometrist is telling them, you know, I can't really correct your vision beyond what it is right now with glasses. And it's usually due to having a cataract. And so what uh, standard cataract surgery entails is essentially we have this cloudy lens. We go into the eye, break up that cloudy lens, remove it, and we replace it with a brand new clear lens that sits in, in the previous spot of that cloudy lens. 
And so um, if you think about a cataract, almost like a candy M&M, essentially our job as surgeons is to remove the chocolate inside and keep the shell intact. And then what we do is we inject a brand new clear lens within that shell. Um, and that's how the lens is suspended within the eye after surgery. And so really the beauty of cataract surgery is you have so many options in terms of lenses, in terms of technology that we can use, such as laser, such as aura. And so it really is a fantastic time to be a patient uh, because you have all of these options and services available to you. And so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, before we jump into the lenses, I wanted to talk about range of vision because this is a concept that's really important to understand when we're talking about cataract surgery. Um, and so there's three main ranges of vision that we talk about when you come in for your, for your consultation. The first being your distance vision or far vision. And that's primarily vision that you're going to be using when you're driving, when you're cycling, when you're out, outdoors. Um, even television, if you're far enough, would be considered uh, distance vision. The second would be intermediate vision. And that's primarily what we refer to when you're looking at your computer uh, or your tablet or you're cooking in the house. Um, and then lastly, near vision refers to really up close work. For example, when you're looking at your cell phone or you're reading a book um, or you're reading a menu at a restaurant. So keep these uh, different ranges of vision in mind as we're discussing the lenses. Um, and so really at the time of cataract surgery, we're really deciding between which lens, which lens or lenses are the best options for you. Um, and then we're deciding between traditional cataract surgery versus laser cataract surgery. Um, so the first step is really deciding which lens you are a good candidate for. And not every patient is going to be a good candidate for every lens. And we're going to go into more details regarding that. Um, and then the second step is to determine whether or not there is a benefit to having laser added to your cataract surgery. And we'll talk about who's a candidate for that technology. And so uh, as far as laser assisted cataract surgery goes, this is not LASIK, but this is laser that we use at the time of cataract surgery uh, to do three main things. And so th the main advantages of this is one, it sort of automates some of the more delicate parts or portions of the surgery. One of those being the capsulotomy, which is the opening uh, of the cataract. And so typically your surgeon would have to do that manually, but with the use of the laser, that procedure is really automated and takes out a lot of the delicacy from the procedure. Um, and so it sort of streamlines that for you. Another good advantage of the laser is astigmatism correction. And typically we, we reserve this for patients who have low levels of astigmatism. And we'll get into more detail in just a bit regarding that. Um, and then the last uh, thing that I like to use it for is the lens softening effect. Um, and so it's really helpful for patients who have advanced cataracts or even moderate cataracts uh, because it sort of pre-chops or pre-softens pre that cataract for us so that we use less energy when we're applying, when we're, when we're removing the cataract from the eye. And again, this technology can be paired with any of the lenses that you choose. Um, and we typically do this right before we go to the operating room. And so you're, if you come to, the, to, to your surgery date, you're in the pre-op bed, we wheel you over to the laser room, we, we do the laser, you don't have to get out of bed or anything like that, and then we wheel you back to the operating room right next door. So it's a really nice way to kind of streamline astigmatism correction also at the time of cataract surgery. And now this is uh, what the surgeon sees when they're applying the laser. Um, and so you can see that the laser is taking very precise measurements of the cornea, of the lens. It's showing us our incisions, uh, where we're going to make your astigmatism correction, correcting incisions. It shows us where the capsulotomy is going to go. So it's a very, very precise technology um, that's really helpful in certain patients who are undergoing cataract surgery. Now, who is a really good candidate for laser? So one, it would be anybody who has low levels of astigmatism um, because we can use the laser to make relaxing incisions to relieve that and ultimately correct your, your vision so it's better without glasses. Um, for patients who have dense or advanced cataracts, it's really helpful because once you sort of pre-soften that cataract, it becomes a little bit easier to remove from the eye. So we use less energy when doing so, uh, which minimizes the risk of damage to nearby structures. Um, anybody who has corneal disease, so for example, somebody who has Fuchs dystrophy, where they're prone to having swelling after cataract surgery, when we use the laser, it again minimizes the need for uh, the amount of energy that we're applying to the eye and therefore minimizes that risk of having corneal swelling 
going after surgery. So it's a really nice, neat technology for that patient population. And then ultimately, um, it's really for anybody who's looking to have the most precise technology while they're going through this process. So uh, I always talk about laser for all of my patients, uh, just so they know that it's available and so that they know the benefits of it. Um, and so it's really up to you to decide whether you want to use utilize that technology or not. Now, um, let's talk about a, a little bit about astigmatism. And so a lot of patients will come in with astigmatism, whether that's low or high level of astigmatism. What that means is your eye is shaped more like a football rather than a basketball or a soccer ball. And so what you would experience as a patient would be mainly around headlights. Things may appear elongated. Um, they may appear a little bit blurry. Um, so overall, your vision is just not as sharp. Uh, if your astigmatism is there. Uh, and so that's when we start to think about how should we correct your astigmatism at the time of cataract surgery. And so, well, let's dive into why we should correct your astigmatism. One is to improve the overall quality of your vision. Uh, we can improve the best corrected vision that you can achieve after cataract surgery. It minimizes your need for glasses after cataract surgery. And the nice thing is we can do it at the time of cataract surgery. So we're hitting two birds with one stone. And so um, I like to always kind of reference this flow chart when I'm thinking about astigmatism correction. Um, so if we go down that left, uh, the, that left side of the flow chart, for low level astigmatism, we can correct that with laser. Going down the right side, high level astigmatism, that's when we start thinking about using a toric lens to correct for astigmatism. And we'll get into more details here shortly. So let's talk about the lenses now that are available on the market. Uh, so a lot of patients will come in asking, well, what does my insurance cover? So insurance covers the basic monofocal lens. And this is a lens that's set for one focal point. And so whether that's distance or near, depending on your preference, uh, there's no astigmatism correction in this lens. And what that means is you'll have great quality vision. You'll just need glasses to achieve that best vision after cataract surgery. Um, so it's really a very nice option for patients who don't mind, who don't mind wearing glasses after surgery. Now, when we look at the basic lens uh, in terms of distance, intermediate, and near vision, uh, if you have no astigmatism, then you're going to have pretty good distance vision without need for glasses. However, for intermediate and near vision, that's where you're going to need glasses to achieve that better vision. Um, and the glare and halo profile for this lens is very minimal. It's the least of any of the lenses that we're going to talk about today. So it's a great option, again, for anybody who's looking for the best quality vision and does not mind wearing glasses after surgery. Now, back to the astigmatism flow chart. If we go down that right side again, if we're looking at high astigmatism, then we need to start thinking about a toric lens, which again, just means we're correcting astigmatism. And so a toric lens is gonna give you that very nice distance vision uh, without need for glasses. And then you'll need glasses for intermediate vision and for near vision. And again, very minimal glare and halos with these lenses because they're just set for monofocal, uh, for monofocal uh, set points. Now, another uh, lens that a lot of patients will come in asking questions about is the panoptics. The panoptics lens is a trifocal lens. So similar to your glasses that may, that may come in a bifocal or a trifocal, this lens is gonna give you three different set points and it's gonna give you good vision for distance, intermediate, and for near vision. Now, there is no perfect lens on the market. So it really comes down to, out, to weighing the benefits and the risks of these lenses in your particular situation. So the downside to the panoptics lens, and I always tell this to all of my patients who are considering this lens, is you will get some glare and halos. And th that's the trade-off for having little need for glasses after surgery. Um, and so here's a depiction of what that might look like. So uh, the, the first photo on the left is after implantation of a trifocal lens one month after surgery. And you can see that around the tail lights, they're not as sharp, they're not as distinct borders. There's a little bit of halo and glare around those lights. Now, the, the, the data shown that those, those glare and halos kind of reduce over time. So if we look at the middle photo there, that's six months after surgery, you can see that those glares and halos have sort of diminished over time. And when we compare that trifocal lens with the monofocal lens, which is covered by insurance, you can see that you still have very good quality vision with the trifocal, but you still have some glare and halos as opposed to the monofocal where there are no glare and halos around those lights. So it's a good depiction of what you may experience if you decide to choose this lens for your cataract surgery. Now, 
who is the right candidate for this lens? So I'm not recommending this lens to every single person that walks into clinic. You have to be a good candidate for this. So somebody who's looking to minimize their need for glasses, that's the first thing. The second thing, and probably arguably more important, would be that they have no other issues going on with the eye. So no macular degeneration, no glaucoma, no corneal issues. And the reason for that is patients who have those issues already have decreased quality of vision. And so we don't want to compound that issue by introducing a lens that's going to slightly introduce some of those complexities into their situation and possibly degrade some of that vision at the at the benefit of having reduced glasses. And so for patients who have anything going on in the retina or have glaucoma, I usually tend to shy away from using this lens. And then lastly, uh, it's really for somebody who is okay with having, with tolerating some glare and halos um, in order to achieve glasses, uh, minimal need for glasses after surgery. Now, the next lens that I wanted to discuss with you today is the Vividi lens. Um, and the Vividi lens is a cousin to pan optics, but it's designed a little bit differently. So rather than having concentric, concentric trifocal rings that give you that uh, those three different ranges, the Vividi has the central button that extends the range of vision for you. And so this lens is going to give you good distance vision and good intermediate vision. However, for near work, like your cell phone, uh, or looking at a menu, you're going to need uh, cheaters or reading glasses. Um, the benefit of this lens, and you're like, you may think, you know, why would I do that over the pan optics? Is the there are less glare and halos with this lens, so it's a little bit more forgiving of a lens for patients who are trying to minimize that risk after surgery. And so when we look at the this chart again in comparison uh, to the monofocal, you can see that without glasses, you're going to have good distance vision. Without glasses, good intermediate vision. But then for near work, you're still going to need those cheaters. Um, and expect a little bit of glare and halos with this lens when compared to the standard monofocal lens. And so who's a good candidate for this type of lens? Well, it's somebody who's looking to minimize their need for glasses, somebody who is okay with wearing near near glasses for near vision. Um, it's somebody who's looking to minimize the risk of glare and halos, but still willing to tolerate some of that. Um, and then has mild ocular pathology. So when we looked at the pan optics, you know, anybody who had anything wrong in the retina or uh, had glaucoma, we sort of ruled them out as candidates for the pan optics. But this lens is, again, a little bit more forgiving. So if you have mild macular degeneration or mild glaucoma, you may still be a good candidate for this type of lens. And so when we talk about that, when we compare all the lenses that we sort of discussed so far, you can see with the monofocal lens, if you have no astigmatism, um, you don't need glasses for distance, you'll still need glasses for intermediate and for near vision. For patients with high astigmatism, toric lens is going to give them good distance vision. You'll still need glasses for intermediate and for near vision. If you choose the Vividi lens, that Vividi lens is going to give you good distance vision, good intermediate vision, but you'll need glasses for near work and expect some glare and some halos. With the pan optics, you're going to get good distance, intermediate, and near vision without glasses, but definitely expect to have some glare and halos after surgery. And so, well, what if you are a patient who's interested in the pan optics or the Vividi, but you also have high astigmatism? Well, you don't necessarily just have to take just the toric lens. Uh, the Vividi and the pan optics lens both come in toric formats. And so if you are a patient who has high astigmatism, you would still qualify for the pan optics or the Vividi, and we would correct your astigmatism using one of those lenses. Now, what is on the cutting edge of IOL te technology or intraocular lens technology uh, is a, a lens that I wanted to discuss today is the light adjustable lens. Now, this lens has been around for about two years or so, and it's, it's a very neat technology. It's the only lens that we can modify the prescription of that lens after the cataract surgery. So up until this point, all of the lenses that we've discussed once we implant them at the time of cataract surgery, we can't really modify the prescription of them. So if you know, if you wanted a little bit more distance vision in one eye or a little bit more near vision in, in one eye, we can't really make that adjustment. However, with this new technology, the light adjustable lens, it's a lens that allows us to, you know, you go through your cataract surgery, everything is the same up until that point. The only difference is we're implanting this new lens, this light adjustable lens. And what that means for you afterwards is we can really hone in and give you the vision that you're looking for after cataract surgery. So if you say, hey doc, you know, I want a little bit more distance vision in this eye or a little bit more near vision in this eye, we can make that happen for you. And this is a really nice technology for, for patients who've had LASIK, and I'll get to, to what the rationale for that here in a minute. Um, and so this is the first 
lens that offers us the ability to change the prescription after cataract surgery. Um, and what you expect is you should expect a few more post-operative visits. Um, and so we typically say you're going to have about five visits after cataract surgery, which is a little bit more than any of the other lenses that we've discussed up until this point. These visits are a little bit longer because you have to be dilated. We have to check the prescription. Um, we, we'd like to put you in trial frames at the, after, after your cataract surgery to see exactly what your visual outcome preference is. And sometimes we have you walk around the clinic to see if you like that, that prescription. And then we finally take you to the procedure room where we apply this UV light uh, to the lens. And the UV light actually changes the shape of that lens to give you your desired visual prescription. And so this is a sort of a depiction of what you would expect. We take you to that procedure room. There's a nice little microscope set up for you. Uh, and there is UV exposure within that microscope that we apply. And so rather than this, uh, this random physician doing the light adjustable treatment, it's myself that's doing it. And so uh, the advantages of the light adjustable lens is one where you can really customize your vision. It gives the patients a lot more flexibility. It gives you the ability to try out multiple different visual outcomes and see which one you really prefer. Um, and a really un unique advantage of it is we can actually do astigmatism correction. So if you are a patient who does have high astigmatism, toric lens is, is not the only option anymore. You can actually consider a light adjustable lens as well. Um, so what to expect after surgery. So the, the after surgery is really what differs for this lens compared to other lenses. And so one of the main things is you do have to wear UV protective glasses, which are provided by the manufacturer of the lens. And the reason for that is because of the way that we change the prescription of the lens, it's by basically applying UV light to that lens. And so we don't want extraneous UV exposure coming in from, for example, the sun that would modify that lens inadvertently and change the outcome of that lens for you. And so we ask that you wear these lenses for four to six weeks after surgery. Once you're, you're locked in and, and the lens has been exhausted of any of those polymers anymore, so it can't really change shape, then we sort of, uh, we get you off of those, those glasses. The other thing that I alluded to was that you do, you do need to come in for more frequent visits. So we say generally three to five additional visits. And again, you will be ha having to be dilated at those visits. So they are a little bit longer, but it's a really fantastic technology. Now, who is the right candidate for these lenses? Well, it's somebody who really wants the most precise outcome after their cataract surgery. So that's, that's a, an awesome and unique feature of this lens is that we can, again, we can dial in the prescription according to exactly what you're telling us you'd like. Um, again, the, the, the other advantage is there's astigmatism correction that's built into the lens. Um, and as I mentioned, patients who've had LASIK or PRK or RK are really uh, fantastic candidates for this lens. And the reason being is when you come in for your preoperative visit, we do all of these measurements in the clinic to, to determine which lens to put inside the eye. However, those, those measurements are based off of your cornea. And if you're a patient who, who's had LASIK in the past, your corneal, has, your corneal curvature has been modified. And so uh, the formulas that we use to determine which lens to put in the eye are going to be less accurate than, than they are for somebody who's never had LASIK or never had any surgery on their cornea. And so by having, uh, by having this technology available, we can really hone in on that exact prescription and minimize those inaccuracies that may result in patients who had LASIK. And then other criteria to be a good candidate for this lens is somebody who's willing to wear UV protection for four to six weeks after surgery, um, and somebody who's willing to come in for those additional visits, spend that extra time in the chair side with us uh, to make sure you get that desired outcome. And so what is on the horizon in terms of lenses? Uh, one, one of the lenses that I wanted to mention today is the IC8 lens, uh, also known as Aptera. So this lens is a small aperture. It basically works by pinhole effect. Uh, and it's really designed for patients who want monovision. And primarily, I would use this lens in patients who've had RK. Again, once you modify that cornea, uh, everything becomes a little bit less accurate. So these patients are ideal candidates for it, or really anybody who has irregular corneas and is trying to get the most precise visual outcome. And this lens is not yet available. Um, we are expecting it to be available either end of this year or early next year. And so um, 
Another thing that I wanted to discuss today was, is there a way to verify the lens one last time before implantation? So as I mentioned, when you come in for your preoperative visit, we're doing a whole host of testing to really hone in and determine which lens is going to be the best lens choice for you. But what if we can do one final measurement prior to implanting that lens? And well, there is, and it comes in the form of Aura. And so Aura is this technology that we can use during cataract surgery while you're on the operating table. Um, and basically we, we use this technology once that cataract is removed. And so Aura takes one final measurement. It measures your eye, it measures your cornea, um, and it gives us a number that's more accurate um, or really leads us in one way or another in terms of which lens is going to be the most accurate and ideal for you. So it's a really helpful technology. I love it in patients who've had LASIK, again, because their, their testing is always going to be a little bit less accurate than somebody who hasn't had LASIK. And so it, it really helps us dial in on the exact lens that's going to work for that patient. Now, when, when we pair these lenses that I talked about, these amazing technologies, we pair it with this fantastic laser that's precise, reproducible, and we pair that with the aura, we're really at the cusp and pinnacle of cataract surgery. And so it's really a fantastic time to be a patient. It's a fantastic time to be a surgeon, to be able to utilize all of these technologies at my disposal to really give patients their desired visual outcomes. And so when you come in for your consultation, we do a very comprehensive exam. We do a dilation. Uh, we look at your corneas. We do corneal mappings. We do retinal scans. And then I sit down with you. We have a thorough discussion of all your options. And then we basically create a plan together and go on from there. And so um, I know it was probably a brief talk, but I wanted to allow enough time to have uh, questions answered. And so I thank you all. And I look forward to seeing you in clinic.